Good morning, this is Brent with Lockton's Motorsports. This is the block that we're gonna use for our 445 street strip build. And uh, I'm gonna dedicate this video to how you guys need to, uh, to prep your engine blocks for various applications. Um, this particular block is a, a D4TE block. Um, they they are notorious for being thick in the bulkheads. You can see these are called crow's foot mains. Um, a lot of your factory FE blocks just have this rib and this rib with nothing in between. Uh, but this is a, a strengthening rib. These are pretty beefy blocks. Good candidate for our higher horsepower 445 build. So what I think I'm gonna do is, uh, I've already started some prep work, but just to show you uh, what needs to be done, what can be done, what should be done, and what tools to, to use to, to get those um, results. Interesting that uh, this is a factory repair. Usually when you see braze work and you know it's been milled with the pan rail, uh, this has been repaired by the factory. You see a lot of that with the factory stuff. Um, I think I've featured some some other factory blocks that have had different repairs. Um, sometimes you'll see this on the deck, sometimes you'll see it on the side of the block. So it's pretty, I wouldn't say it's normal, but it's not abnormal. But um, just interesting to see what the factory did before they sent the blocks out. We have already began to, uh, so from the factory, most of these gallery plugs in, in the front and in the back and in the lifter valley are a cup plug. So we convert those to, um, to a quarter inch pipe. Uh, it's all pretty much easy to convert that uh, drill size for a quarter inch pipe is a 7 16 drill, and then you just come back with a nice sharp tap and uh, and tap those holes. If you're using uh, a three quarter groove bearing like this coated Federal Mogul bearing, which is what we're gonna be using for this build, uh, you will need to uh, flare out the holes in the, in the main saddles because the bearing pretty much completely covers the hole. So what I do is I just make a mark with a Sharpie, how far I have to pull the edge out. And um, and I do that with a die grinder. I'll show you the, the burr that I use to do that. But um, most most all the time, the, the thrust bearing saddle is fine and the rear one is fine. It's just these ones uh, in the number two and uh, number four and number one positions that need to be pulled over. Don't get carried away with this. Um, FEs are weak in the main saddles. I have seen a lot of blocks come in uh, cracked through through here. So I think it's from guys really trying to open these up. You don't need to do that. You just need to flare the just the edge of the hole over, and um, that's about it. So I'm going to grab a die grinder, and uh, I'll show you the result of that. So this is the die grinder I use. Uh, headporters use this one because it's pretty heavy duty uh, electric, so you don't have to keep your air compressor running a lot. Um, burrs are available in practically any size and, and shape and diameter. I use just a little tapered uh, burr for this job, and you just need to just um, start from this side and just lay it down just a little bit. Like I said, you're just trying to flare that hole back. You're not trying to make the hole bigger or, uh, you know, hog that hole out. And here are the results of that. So like I said, you just need just to flare the edges out just a little bit so that uh, you get a full shot to, to the bearing groove. The next thing you can do is to remove all this casting flash from around uh, the the bulkheads of the block. Usually this is pretty nasty with all kinds of stuff sticking up there. Uh, a die grinder makes a quick work of that, and then you can come back with one of these 
uh, sanding wheels in, in a die grinder or a drill and, and just smooth it all up and make it look nice. Um, the oil pump hole, uh, I've started to rough this out. You can see where I have laid out where the gasket sits. So we can move this out to uh, match the gasket. The biggest thing is you wanna open up the floor uh, because it necks down, down inside of there. So I can use a uh, that same uh, burr that I just used uh, to bring this out and shape it. And then I have a ball burr to get down in there and the ball burr lets you shape this side of, of the hole as well. So you can see how I brought that and out to the edges and kind of moved that in. Here is the ball burr. So what I can do now is come and work this and also shape this down inside. This is just a pretty good choke point right here for some reason. Um, I don't do anything to here uh, because these are pretty big holes, uh, especially this one. And, um, but here, here's, here's a pretty bad bottleneck in terms of getting oil directly into the motor straight from, straight from the oil pump. And here are the results of that. You can see the floor of the hole is worked as well as the roof of the hole has been shaped into, um, I can go back with a cartridge roll now and, and smooth all that out. If you're not familiar with a cartridge roll, I'll, I'll show you what that, what that is right now. A cartridge roll is just a piece of, it's basically just a piece of sandpaper that's wrapped around a mandrel. These mandrels are, uh, you buy these individually. The cartridge rolls have a hole through them. You just screw them on like a, like a thread. So now I can go in here and just really smooth all this out and make it look nice. Okay, once that is done, uh, most of the time your machine shops will, will do this for you, but the bottoms of the cylinders have to be deburred. Otherwise, from the honing and boring process, it'll leave a sharp edge right here. Uh, when your piston, sometimes your piston comes down below this edge on some of your longer stroke engines. Uh, when that happens, this sharp edge, if it's there, will catch the aluminum on the piston and roll it up. And then if you've ever torn in, an engine down and seen a lot of scuff marks right through here, that's probably what has happened. So all that has to be broken um, and and smoothed out on, on each one, on the bottom side and on the upper side. You can do that with a cartridge roll um, or one of those sanding discs that I showed you earlier, but uh, you just wanna break that edge. If you use a cartridge roll, um, you can come in through uh, the bottom or the top of the cylinder and just lay your cartridge roll over the edge. Just make sure that you don't let it flap against or flop against the, the cylinder wall because it can scuff it up. Okay, so we're gonna turn our um, attention to the front side of the block and the top side. Uh, when you tap this hole behind the distributor, uh, it'll usually leave a, a burr down inside uh, where the, the, the hole goes through the lifter bore. So make sure that you use a hone uh, or a dingleberry hone or something like that to smooth that out. Um, here's the results of all these being converted to quarter inch pipe. Um, I lost my pin light. Hold on a minute. Okay. So we have also tapped down inside each of these lifter gallery offshoots. So the oil comes up through here. This is a 390 block, so it's a top oiler. The oil comes up through here. This is what feeds uh, your cam bearing. Uh, your cam, the opening in the block for your cam bearing is grooved around the bearing, so that's what feeds your cam bearing and your mains and your rods, uh, kind of like a small block Chevrolet. So the oil comes through this way. Um, here's the branches to each of your lifter bore galleries. And um, we don't want a ton of oil going to this. We don't need it, uh, especially since we're running a solid roller camshaft. So I tap down inside. This is a quarter inch pipe plug right here. 
Down inside is an eighth inch pipe plug. So uh, you can get eighth inch pipe plugs and I usually uh, drill an 80 to 100 thousandths hole in that pipe plug and then screw those in um, before you plug the main hole at the top. So uh, next thing we're gonna do, um, just some work up here at the top. This is uh, your oil drain for the back. It's just kind of jagged. You see it's got casting flash on it. You can use that same uh, burr tool to just smooth this out. Um, should be one right here too. That's kind of nasty looking. Just take the sharp edges off of it. And then I usually take this casting, this is usually junked up right here. You can remove that. That lets the oil flow to the front pretty easily. Uh, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to show you something else that needs to be done. Okay, so the next thing, uh, we often talk about uh, horsepower that you have to pay for and horsepower that's free. So here, since this is going to be a, uh, a street strip build, um, we're going to focus on some getting back some of that free horsepower um these are the drains for the lifter valley and um if you if you notice those drain directly down onto the cam and the crank and the rods and everything underneath that um not uh justifiable to use something like an enclosed cam tunnel on something like this um, for one thing, the stroke is, is too long and uh, you'd never physically fit everything in the block. But uh, it's just a, a lot of work for, for a street and strip build. So what we're going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to tap each one of these holes with a half inch pipe tap. And do these on these side as well. And then I'm going to use uh, these aluminum uh, they're actually uh, an MPT to hose barb fitting and what I can do is um, I'll use two on this side two on this side and then the remaining holes I'll plug with a pipe plug that will allow uh, the crankcase to still vent but it will keep all the oil off of the rotating assembly uh, as as much as we can there obviously there's going to be some squirting out of the bottom of the lifter bores and the cam bearings and that sort of thing but uh all the all the oil that drains into the lifter valley will stay off of the rotating assembly uh worth a few horsepower doesn't take long to do and uh i see that as a benefit and we got those tapped and ready to go uh the next thing to do is to uh, run a thread chaser down through all the holes and make sure those are cleaned out. You don't want to uh, get into a spot where you're bolting stuff on and it doesn't want to turn. What I do here is put a thread chaser um, and a socket onto my drill and just run it down through there, back it out per hole pretty quick. Got that finished. Next thing is we're gonna give the block a nice wash and uh, get it all sparkly clean. Um, I, what I like to do is I have the typical bore brushes that you just pass through, but what I like to do is cut the ends off uh, the handle side. You know, usually they have the ring on the end. I cut those off so I can chuck it up in a drill and just give it a nice scrub in and out. Uh, obviously, you want to do all the passages, all of your offshoots, and uh, up and you know up into this passage right here that comes off the oil filter adapter goes all the way up to here. Uh, it feeds your cam bearing and your main bearing, but then it offshoots up to here, and this is the clean out. So this is your main uh, oil feed clean out, and obviously you want to clean all of these are lifter bores and everything. So we're gonna get the block washed and uh, give it a nice scrub. One thing I will tell you that some of these D4 TE blocks come from heavy duty applications. So 
The hole for the distributor shaft is oversized. Um, Precision Oil Pumps offers a, a bushing that you drive down in that hole so it adapts it to a passenger car distributor size. This one is uh, doesn't need that bushing. Okay, so a few things have happened since I saw you a second ago. Um, got the engine washed, got the block washed, I mean, up on our engine stand. Um, got our cam bearings in and checked uh, clearance on the cam bearings. Um, getting ready to wipe out the cylinders. And uh, keep in mind that this block has been jet washed and it's been hand washed. So let me show you why you always have to go back through and wipe the cylinders down multiple, multiple times. So you could do this for <laughs> probably every bit of 15, 20 minutes. And uh, you just need to keep, keep doing it until the cylinders are, when you can stick a towel down in there and it comes out white. So you can use a, a lot of different solvents and things to do to cut all this honing oil and stuff out of the cylinders. Um, automatic transmission fluid works well. WD-40 works well. Uh, lacquer thinner works well. So I usually go through with some lacquer thinner, and come back with some WD, and then lacquer thinner again. Same thing with your lifter bores. Um, they are gonna be dirty, so they need to be washed out too. Uh, same deal. This is, uh, this is stuff that you can't get with uh, a jet wash or a hand wash, and um, I wish you could, but it's just kind of manual labor. Uh, it's not loose, you know, loose grit, loose dirt or anything like that. It's just kind of stained left over. So I have checked uh, the fitment of the pipe plug that goes behind the distributor bore. It absolutely has to sit below the surface of, of this cylinder or of the uh, distributor bore. If not, the distributor will hang up as it goes down in there. Uh, I'll, something that a lot of people don't know the rear cam plug has to go in with the flat side out. So normally on a small block Ford or small block Chevrolet, big block Ford, you see you see it go in like you would see a regular uh, freeze plug go in. That is not the case on an FE. It is meant to go flat side out. The uh, when you drive the rear cam bearing in. There's actually a shoulder that you have to stop before you pass pass it up with the bearing. Uh, that shoulder is for the lip of this plug to set up against. If you don't put this in the correct way, your cam will make a lathe out of itself and it'll start to wear this uh, plug down and it'll start dumping shavings directly into your number five main feed no bueno so uh i want to get the cleaning a little bit more it's cold outside and the shop is a little colder than normal um i would like to get this painted and prepped and uh ready to go this weekend we'll see how that goes i still have to check um well i've got a lot to do uh check main bearing clearances once I do that, then I can drop the crank off to be balanced. Um, I need to hang, I need to weigh and measure and hang <clears throat> the pistons on the rods so we can get that done. Um, so, a lot of work yet. I'm gonna get to cleaning. Hopefully we can get some paint on this puppy. Waiting for it to warm up a little outside and decided I'd go ahead and check some main bearing clearances. We have studs on the front four, bolts on the back. This is actually a, um, we started doing this a long time ago and then ARP started offering kits exactly like this. So the reason we do it is because the stud sticks up so high. Um, back here is where your oil pan sits. And if you have a stud that sticks up high, it just doesn't work. So 
years ago we started um, putting bolts on the rear cap and then uh, ARP started offering kits that way so it makes it very handy so everything is under under surface of the pan rail and especially when you get a gasket on it so we've got our calico coated federal mogul main bearings in there checking clearances uh, we're gonna have to adjust a couple of crank journals with some polish but uh, we'll get them dialed in there uh, next step is to um, put some paint on this thing so i um, got our timing cover uh, all cleaned up and, and ready to go. And we'll get that mounted on here because the timing cover is to be the same color as the block. So we'll get that mounted, get everything taped up, and then we can throw down some paint. And we got everything masked off. Uh, I want to see if I can roll this outside and throw some color to it. So hopefully the next time you see it, it'll be nice and blue. Well, we got color, and I'm pretty sure it's blue. I don't know what you all think. I'm going to let that dry for a little while. I'm going to get the freeze plugs knocked in, galley plugs, and uh, our restrictors, and, and all of that stuff. Um, turn our attention to the pistons. We're going to be using some Male pistons. Really nice, out-of-the-box stuff. And I was happy that we didn't have to order a custom because they're going for uh, six to eight weeks right now. Uh, Male stuff coated, uh, inboard pin boss, very light, 495 grams on this one. Um, short wrist pin, and it uses pretty light ring pack, uh, one millimeter, one millimeter, two millimeter, the Napier second, and stand, standard tension for a one millimeter ring. So good streetable piston rings. Got them all measured and weighed. Uh, and now I can make up my bob weight so that we can have the crank balanced. And I'm gonna go ahead and get these pistons hung on. Well, first I'm gonna go through and weight match our rods and pistons. Um, don't want to grind on anything unless I absolutely have to, but uh, should be able to match everything up. I usually can and get everything balanced out. And moving right along, I got everything matched together. So now I can start assembly. Uh, oil on the wrist pin. We got wire locks, or I will put oil on the wrist pin. Uh, had two thoughts that were fighting each other for my brain. Um, Wire locks on this one, uh, pretty standard for a lot of pistons these days. Race Tech, Male, they do wire locks. Diamond does um, spiral locks. Um, I don't have an issue with either one of them. They all work well. But uh, I'm going to get everything lubricated up and get these pistons on the rods and stuck in the box until the crank is done and ready to drop in. All right, we got some uh, curing time on this. Uh, while it is still curing, uh, we'll put our freeze plugs in. We're gonna be using some brass freeze plugs. Do yourself a favor and buy a set of freeze plug drivers. Um, it, I don't know what to say here, but a lot of people reach for a, a socket and an extension and do that but that's not the correct way to do it and it leaves a nice ring inside the freeze plug which does not look good uh, professional way to do it is use a freeze plug driver uh, i am incredibly picky and put all my letters the same facing but uh, that's just me but uh, i use some of my go-to silicone dow corning 732 put a little bit on the outside and then drive those puppies home.
So we're continuing our prep and I went ahead and drilled a couple of eighth inch pipe plugs. These are or bronze brass um, with an orifice in the middle of it. And uh, we'll get those screwed in underneath. Let's see if you can, mm, it's hard to see, but uh, they go down in there past the quarter inch pipe plug and it just meters the amount of oil going to each lifter gallery. Always put a little oil around those when you screw them in so that it doesn't gall. But that's what we're looking at. We'll do the other side. I knew I was gonna do that as soon as I picked up the phone. Sorry, I know you don't want to see my hand. And that one's done. Ta-da! Then we can knock in the rest of our oil gallery plugs. That one, so we'll need one, two, three, four for the top. This is your block drain, water drain. And, uh, which I'm struggling with getting this one started, obviously. Little uh, Teflon paste around the outside. And there's four back here, one, two, three, four. This is your, your clean out between your cam bearing and your main bearing. This is your driver side lifter gallery, passenger side lifter gallery, main oil gallery. These get thread sealant on those as well. Gallery plug here. This is the front end of this big long gallery. It runs down the length of the block. Oil on that when you screw it in. And never forget the plug behind the distributor. If you leave that one out, you will have uh, some oil pressure issues, guaranteed. So uh, if you've got a sharp eye, you'll notice I left two of these out. It's cause I ran out of these. I thought I had a bin full and I've only got two so I have to snag some more. I'll get those in later. Uh, we got our cylinder head dowels to put in. Uh, I do that with a little brass hammer. Make short work of it, and then uh, that's done. We're gonna put our timing cover seal in, um, and then I'm gonna bag this baby up, and we're gonna call it a day. All right, so for our seal, use uh, a little bit of uh, got this tube down to the very last drop put a little bit of silicone around the outside of it keep oil from by any chance having to, to get behind the seal and finding its way out uh fe's go in from the back sometimes on the windsor stuff and some of the cleveland stuff you can drive them in from the front uh, this isn't the case. Use a good seal driver. Grab a hammer. And sometimes, depending on the timing cover, uh, the seal driver drives flush and doesn't really get down deep enough, so I give it a, a good solid hit with a straight screwdriver and make sure that it's seated. And that's pretty much it. All right, we got her bagged up. I'm gonna knock off for today. Uh, I am a one man shop, so that means that I am also the order taker and the order placer and the shipping department and the bookkeeper and everything else. So I'm gonna knock it off for today, get some orders in. Uh, phone's been ringing all day long, emails, that sort of thing. So tomorrow uh, we're gonna get our 
Molly ring packed, all the rings filed and washed and uh, get those ready. Uh, so Mr. Clint, um, you'll probably be hearing from me sometime next week and we'll get the rest of the parts ordered uh, for this engine bill since it'll go very quickly from here. Uh, harmonic balancer, uh, let's see, the rocker arms are here. I uh, had some custom Harlan Sharp rockers made for me that oil through the push rods, needle bearing fulcrum. But uh, we'll need the oil pan and the pickup and uh, valve covers and uh, water pump and all. Well, I've got the water pump here. So just a few odds and ends and uh, we'll get this one uh, buttoned up. Waiting to dyno the 496 dyno mule. It's patiently waiting on its cradle. Uh, waiting for the weather to hold. I uh, was planning on doing it next week. We'll have to play it by ear. Uh, getting a whole lot of rain next week with some temperatures in the morning in the freezing zone. So, uh, rather not take engines down uh, after it's been raining or while it's raining or whatever. So, we'll just have to play that by ear. But, uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Take time, if you have not, to hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button as well, and stay tuned for more Ford videos. Have a good weekend.